Great. All right. So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this is a webinar on the water campaign with Combatants for Peace. Uh, my name is Beth Schumann. I'm the director of American Friends of Combatants for Peace. Um, and I just wanna thank you all for being here. Uh, so a few quick logistical notes before we start. The first is if you have any questions that come up, um, go into your chat box. There is a chat person called send questions here. Please send your questions to the chat box that it says send questions here. If you send them to me or any of the speakers, unfortunately we won't be checking that chat box. So if you have questions again, please send them to send questions here. That's the first thing to note. Um, the second thing to note is this is going to be a 60 to 75 minute webinar. We should be, um, a hard stop at half past the next hour. So whatever time zone you happen to be in. Um, for Eastern time, that's 1.30. For Jerusalem time, that is 8.30. And for everyone in between, um, you'll have to <laughs> figure out your own time zones. Um, so I'll give you a bit of an introduction and then I'm gonna turn it over to our activists. Um, again, I said, I'm Beth, uh, the head of American Friends of Combatants for Peace. Um, Combatants for Peace is a uh, NGO in Israel and Palestine, uh, grassroots, that works together, um, binational organization, working together with nonviolent resistance to end the occupation um, and bring peace and freedom to the region. So one of the major campaigns of the last few months has been on water and water rights, uh, ensuring access to water. Um, especially for marginalized communities um, in the Jordan Valley, in the South Hebron Hills, communities who are systemically denied access to water. So that's really going to be the focus of the talk today, what Combatants for Peace is doing about it, uh, what's happening and what Combatants for Peace is doing about it. Um, we also have lots of other programs and activities, but we're going to focus on this one for today. Um, and so we have three amazing activists with us today. Uh, we're going to start with Itai Mack, who's a human rights lawyer, who's going to share with us the situation on the ground regarding water. Avner Wishnitzer, who's a Combatants for Peace founder, um, who is also the Israeli head of the water campaign. And Osama Elowat, who is our education director on the Palestinian side um, and can share with us as well the situation. Um, and then we'll open for questions. And again, send questions here is the place to send questions to. No one else is checking the chat box. So thank you very much. And I'll turn it over to you guys now. Itai, would you start us off? So first, thanks, Beth, uh, for organizing this event and uh, also for everybody that joined us, uh, especially now with the new variant that getting uh, out of control and all the situation. Uh, but why there's many uh, incidents and, uh, and problem around the world that uh, Sometimes we feel they are outside of our control. The problem of uh, the water shortage and the, the lack of access to water in the West Bank and also in the Gaza Strip are, are man-made and are made by a politician and by political decision. And this is why they are so easy to solve if there was a political will. So I will try to, to give a, like a very fast uh, view on the legal situation and all the, the tricks that the Israeli government is doing to create artificial uh, shortage of water. And uh, it's artificial shortage. Uh, our campaign in uh, Combatant for Peace is focused on the area C in the West Bank. And I will shortly explain why, but uh, I will first want to say a few words about uh, the water agreement between the Israeli government and the Palestinian Authority. So, uh, connected to the Oslo negotiation and agreement, there were also agreement about the water. And uh, in it, the Israeli government decided to recognize the Palestinian uh, authority uh, uh, and also Palestinian people rights on the water sources in the West Bank. And, uh, and then the, this agreement established a shared committee uh, where there are uh, Israelis and Palestinian representatives. So first, the recognition of Israel in the water rights of the Palestinians is, is, a, is a joke because uh, this is what the international law says, that uh, the occupied uh, 
they occupy people have the rights for their uh, natural uh, resources. Uh, the occupying country is not uh, able to use the natural uh, sources for uh, its own population or for its own need. This is what the basic international uh, law says. Uh, anyway, this uh, committee what actually create, created a situation in which the Palestinian, need, the Palestinian side need authorization from the East Valley side to dig a water well, to use a water source. And uh, then the East Valley government has full control about uh, how much uh, water the Palestinians are, are able to use for drinking and for uh, industry and for uh, agriculture, but also even the water pressure. Uh, so I live uh, <clears throat> most of my life in Israel. In the last few months, I, I'm based in uh, Oslo. And uh, for me, every time that I have even a small problem in the water, uh, in the water system or even uh, uh, five minutes of lack of, uh, of blackout of electricity, I get crazy. So think about the, the Palestinians that live a few kilometers from uh, the Israeli side of the green line that uh, sometimes have long hours of uh, lack of, of electricity, sometimes lack hours of, uh, of uh, water, and sometimes have uh, a not a strong pressure of water. So the, 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 the possibilities to use the water are limited. But uh, there are also many uh, areas in the, in the West Bank, and I'm talking about Area C, when the Palestinians are not even able uh, legally to connect to, to the water system uh, and to even transfer uh, water that been uh, 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 bought for, by the communities uh, in the private market. Uh, so what Israel is, is, uh, is creating is that in area A and B, which are under the control of uh, the Palestinian Authority, uh, Israel is uh, limiting and creating uh, uh, artificial uh, shortage of water by the, the water committee that I mentioned and the, the agreement. And every time the Palestinian ask for more water, Israel uh, uh, causing problem with that. And in area C, uh, in which Israel don't recognize the legitimacy of the Palestinian existence over there, uh, in which Israel is not giving a uh, building permits to, to any uh, kind of uh, Palestinian structure, the Palestinians are not allowed legally to connect uh, to the water system. Uh, but then there's an, another uh, layer of uh, obstacle that the Israeli government is putting, is by uh, using a military order that, uh, that uh, says that uh, no building without a, a building permit from the, from the authorities is allowed to connect to the water system. Uh, and because the buildings are illegal and sometimes the buildings are illegal because uh, the Israeli government announced uh, on, a, on a, a fire zone or announced on a nature reserve, uh, and this declaration of fire zones in the uh, uh, nature reserve were declared long after uh, the Palestinian communities were already based in these places. Uh, and a good example for that is uh, the southern part of uh, the Hebron Hills and the Jordan Valley. Uh, then the Palestinians don't even have a possibility to get building permit from the authorities, the civil administration, the, the civil administration is part of the, uh, of the Israeli uh, military, if you don't know. Uh, and then the Palestinians are supposed to live forever without possibility to connect to the water system. What uh, this uh, many time uh, communities that live in a, in a very serious poverty, living from herds and uh, for very uh, small uh, uh, agriculture, uh, what they are doing is that they need to buy water from, from uh, uh, private uh, actors and companies, and then they need to transfer the water to their communities. What these, the Israeli authorities are doing is that uh, uh, first on the way of the, of the vehicle that transfer the, the water tanks, uh, many times the, the vehicles are being confiscated, for bringing illegally uh, water to the communities. And if the community is managing to bring with the vehicle the water tanks, many times the water tanks are being uh, confiscated 
or being demolished because they are considered as object uh, that being used for uh, violating the law. And who decide the law? The Israeli government and the military commander. So what we, 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 what's happening in this situation is if we are talking about incidents where uh, vehicles or water tanks were confiscated, if the Palestinian communities want to release them from the end of the, of the uh, civil administration, the military, the Israeli military, they have to pay big fines. Uh, and of course they need water. So what else they could do? They will buy another round of uh, water tanks and will we'll try to find some driver that will be ready to take the risk and drive the, and to transfer the water tanks to their community. So this situation of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, need to pay fine, need to pay uh, money for the, for the owner of the vehicle, need to pay uh, money for uh, the driver, need to pay money for the water themselves, and need to, to uh, 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 pay for the water tanks and for their cleaning and other issues, means that the, the Palestinian communities, especially in the Jordan Valley, when we talk about shepherd communities, uh, they, they, are, uh, being, they are getting luck inside the never ending uh, cycle of debt. Uh, so they need to take loans to finance uh, water. And as I started, all the situation is totally artificial. Uh, you might, I don't know how you're familiar with the Israel history, but like in the 50s, 60s, the, the water issue was a, a part of the argument for the Israeli government to go to war and, and for uh, the Israeli Palestinian Israeli Arab uh, conflict. But uh, this change, this uh, issue changed long, long ago, and especially since the end of the 90s, uh, Israel started uh, uh, moving its water sources to des desalination. So most of the of uh, the water that the most of the drinking water that the Israelis are using now are uh, from desalination uh, uh, structures. And now maybe you heard in the last few days Israel agreed to, to sell the Jordanian Kingdom uh, more water from uh, desalination uh, 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 structures. Uh, so Israel don't need the water sources of, uh, of the West Bank. Israel don't need the water sources of, uh, of the Jordan Valley. Uh, so it's all a political game. Uh, another uh, way uh, to prevent the, the excess of water is, is by the, the grabbing by settlers of a water spring and, uh, and a water sources that uh, indigenous communities of Palestinian shepherds were, were used were uh, using for uh, generations. Uh, so the way that they are doing it, uh, it's difficult for them uh, politically to say, okay, we don't want the Palestinian to reach the spring of their community with their earth. So what they're doing is that they are making the, the, the natural spring as tourist uh, places. Uh, they, they come, they change the water route, they build the pool, like now you could see in the, in the PowerPoint. And then they say that they also want to, to do a, a baptizing, religious baptizing in the water. So when the settlers start uh, changing the, the spring and, and uh, making them like tourists and religious spot, then the, the military uh, claim that he have to, to guard the, the settlers and to prevent the, the regular use of the Palestinian to the water spring. Uh, and again, the meaning of that is the Palestinians have to buy water because they cannot live without uh, water. Uh, so I, I, I want to say that uh, you probably know uh, the Israeli journalist Amira S. Uh, she, you should read the, her articles in Haaretz about the water. She is the, I think the biggest specialist about all the Israeli trick, how to prevent uh, access to water uh, in the West Bank about the water agreements. Uh, what was interesting is that uh, because of the campaign of combatant for peace, which uh, Avner and Osama will tell you in a minute, uh, suddenly, at least in Israel, a lot of people that ignore the water problem in the West Bank uh, uh, understand that there's a problem. And uh, every once in a while, I was told, 
oh, did you hear about the water problem? Did you hear about the, the water problem? And I told it to Amira, like you have been writing on the, the issue of the water for uh, so many years. And now suddenly even uh, Israeli lefties are realizing that there's a problem. And this is the importance of combatant for peace, because uh, if you talk about something legally, politically, but also there's activism, then people are able to open their ears. Uh, and I think that uh, the campaign about water of combatant for peace uh, was very uh, successful. Suddenly, politi Israeli politicians and also Israeli uh, leftists and activists and journalists that, uh, that didn't want to hear it from Amir Haas uh, suddenly realized that there's a, that there's a problem. Uh, and uh, I, uh, maybe in, in the questions, uh, I could suggest, uh, if someone asked me, I would suggest thing that you could do in the US and other places, how to change this uh, political problem, because it's political. It's not South Sudan, it's not Egypt, it's, it's 100% political. Thank you. Thanks. Oh. Thank you so much for that. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Avner. I'm going to we're going to spotlight him. Give us just a second. Um, Avner, we'd love for you to share the situation with water and, and the water campaign. So um, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And I also want to thank uh, Itai, who's doing amazing, amazing work, constantly working. It's unbelievable. Um, so um, my focus will be mostly about the, the water campaign um, in light of the situation that uh, Itai just uh, described, but let me uh, share with you a few images that may help you understand uh, the different ways that Israel, uh, either officially through the army and the authorities or uh, through uh, settlements and settlers who are not reined in and uh, are just allowed to uh, to do whatever they want, pretty much, uh, how this whole system denies Palestinians the uh, uh, right or access to water. Um, so what you see here, for example, is fencing. There's a right-wing activist uh, who are basically uh, building a fence that denies uh, access both to herds, uh, mostly from, from herds to, to go to patients, but also to water sources. Uh, you see um, uh, settlers, in, this is especially in the Jordan Valley. Um, they are usually armed and you can see it here and they scare away um, herds and they uh, confiscate or demolish uh, water tanks. Um, these, these are the water tanks that uh, Palestinians are using to bring in water because they don't have uh, running water. And as Itai explained, they cannot, um, they cannot bring water. And this is what the army usually does uh, to the to what they define as uh, illegal Palestinian settlements, um, uh, and they confiscate these water tanks. You can see it here, um, and then fines for to to get these tanks um, away. I mean, to get them back. If Palestinians try to put uh, pipes pipelines themselves, the army uh, cuts them. You can see it here. Um, so this is a policy, um, um, the, a policy that directs all the water. You can see here from one of the settlements in the in the uh, Jordan Valley, and then this is how it looks in Palestinian settlements. I should remind all of us that many of the settlements we are talking about are not only illegal by international law but many of them are illegal by Israeli law. So they are called uh, illegal outposts, uh, even in, in, in Hebrew, as opposed to settlements, uh, which are also illegal by, by Israeli law. But this uh, differential access to water 
gives you uh, this, these pictures of people living with less than 20 liters of water per day and people living with up, up from, from 300 liters a day. Okay, so it's important to see the policy here. Um, and so what we are trying to do uh, in the campaign, you have a few of the, the numbers here, but I think more important is the general, uh, is the general picture. What we are uh, trying to do with this water campaign that started about uh, three months ago um, is, well, in the first phase, uh, starting around uh, August uh, this year, was to raise awareness uh, more uh, broadly speaking and uh, get people uh, in Israel, politicians, uh, uh, policymakers, journalists, diplomats, be more aware of the situation on the ground um, and to present it explicitly as one of the faces of Israeli oppression. Um, this is not just an isolated problem. Um, and so this was phase one, it was more general uh, in the sense that we had our um, demands, but I think raising awareness was the first and foremost uh, goal. We called for free access to water for all Palestinians in area C. We called for ending settlers taking over water sources and ending the armies uh, turning a blind eye to all of these uh, activities. Um, within, within the framework of this first phase, uh, we uh, held several um, activities um, on um, three or four different level. First level is uh, media, both uh, social media and more traditional media. Second level was the legal, uh, legal um, uh, level, although up until now, we cannot claim any um, uh, achievements here. Third level was the diplomatic level, which means bringing diplomats to these, the places where that, that are most value, uh, vulnerable. Um, and then the fourth is uh, the, the, the activist at the on the ground uh, level. We focused our activities on two main areas, as I, the, the, the areas that are most vulnerable. Uh, I'll show you here on the map. This is the West Bank, or this is the green line here. Um, and first area we worked in is the South Hebron Hills. Uh, on the verge of the desert, um, already hard hit by, the, by, by uh, global warming uh, and uh, water uh, is, is dwindling, water sources are already um, dwindling. The other area uh, in even worse situation is the Jordan Valley. So this is, these were the two areas we focused our activities and what we did on the ground uh, uh, several activities, um, mostly trying to bring water to these uh, uh, very uh, uh, marginalized communities. Um, so you can see here, this was, this was from the first activity, it was a relatively small activity. Um, we tried to bring this water tank to uh, a family in the South Hebron Hills, the army stopped us um, and it deteriorated very quickly to um, crazy violence. You can see uh, some of it here with tear gas and people arrested and injured. Um, this is, a, a, this is the, uh, the leader of the Israeli side here. He's a colonel in the IDF uh, and you can see how he's treated. Um, I, I won't expand on this because this is slightly beyond the point, but this is what happens when you challenge this oppressive uh, order. We didn't, we didn't get the, the, the water tank to, to our 
uh, uh, destination. But then two weeks later, we came with uh, hundreds of people. You can see it here uh, from different organization uh, in a in a in a something we call the water march uh, that we led in Combatants for Peace led it. Um, and this march was uh, peaceful. Uh, it was much bigger, probably the biggest um, activity in the West Bank, the, the Israeli-Palestinian activity in the West Bank in the last few years. Uh, third, we moved to the Jordan Valley and we, uh, we did work uh, using uh, traditional uh, irrigation uh, methods to increase the water, uh, the amount of water that flow into the uh, systems, that uh, Palestinian systems, water systems. Um, uh, this is rain, this is to stop rain, uh, rainwater and then channel them into these systems. Bear in mind that this is also illegal by Israeli law, making any change in, on the ground, even though this is the West Bank, Area C, um, this is also illegal. Uh, so we fix with, with the local communities, the water systems, and uh, do all kinds of uh, activities like this one to increase the amount of water that actually ends up when, when rain falls, ends up in these uh, systems. Um, the next phase, which will start once we have the money to continue, uh, hopefully early next month, if we, if we have enough money, uh, will be much more focused uh, on, on uh, the, the man in charge, which is the Israeli uh, Minister of Defense. Um, uh, he can change at least parts of the reality I just uh, described and Itai described uh, with simple uh, decrees that he can issue pretty easily. As Itai said, much of this is artificial. Um, so our, our next activities are going to be much more focused on getting uh, particular uh, things on the ground to change. For example, uh, Itai mentioned that uh, Palestinians in these areas can only get water with water tanks. But even these water tanks are not allowed to move every day. The army imposes uh, uh, limitations on the days they can move these water tanks. We want to change that. We want to end the confiscation and the, the demolition of water-related uh, equipment. This is a second uh, demand. And to end uh, um, uh, settlers uh, taking over water resources and dismantling existing fences that settlers erected in order to prevent Palestinians from uh, accessing these uh, water sources that were in their use for generations. Um, so this is like in, 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 in broad outlines, the, the, the water campaign. Um, I would only say that, uh, Itai mentioned it briefly, uh, the first phase um, raised huge media uh, interest. We didn't expect that. Uh, but for, for days uh, and weeks, the media uh, kept going back to this, to this campaign and to the violence, the, the, the settlers' violence and the uh, army violence against us um, and against these communities. So uh, this really pushed us uh, or encouraged us to continue um, and, and to, to, to plan the next phase. Um, so that's it for now. I'll be happy to answer questions uh, later. Thank you. Thank you so much, Avner. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to our final speaker, Osama, uh, to share. Thank you, Beth. I actually don't know if I have a lot left to say, but I want to say thank you, everyone, for coming and being like giving us time to hear what's going on here and to, to educate yourself about it and try to change it. I wanna thank uh, 
Avner and Itai for for saying everything I want to say. I'm so proud of myself. I work with such people. They are Israelis, they are Jews, and they still their humanity, pushing them to to stop this injustice on other people, no matter what. And for seeing me and my people as a human being, they taught me a lot better about Judaism than the system used to tell me. And uh, I just want to say that this kind of talks keep reminding me that occupation has nothing to do with Judaism and being against it has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. What I have to say here is as a Palestinian, I appreciate everything we are doing, and I think it's, it's the only thing we can do because, because we don't have that power to do a lot. We are doing as much as we can. But at the same time, my own, I, or my main issue is not the water. The water is one small issue of too many issue, issues. If you give a bird, a thirsty bird, a can of water, Offer him, it will not come to you because birds prefer freedom than water. And for me, I am seeking for my freedom. I want to be free and have all my rights as a human being. There is water for everyone here, but the occupation is using the issue of the water to create an apartheid system. There is an apartheid system here. You, you can call it whatever, but if you come to visit it, I'm not saying things from books. I don't prepare anything when I talk to you. I'm telling things on the ground and I invite everyone to come and to check. They are using this water as transfer system, especially in Jordan Valley. Jordan Valley in summer, it's the lowest and the hottest area in the region. It's 120 degrees in summer. Palestinians in area C's are living in plastic tents. No electricity, no water, nothing. And if they ask for water, you still can hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So if they ask for their rights to get water, they don't give them. And if they steal water from the settlement system, they arrest them. So I just want to mention that this unjust is happening, is happening in West Bank, in Palestine, everywhere, not only in Area C. I live in Jericho. Jericho is the oldest city in the world. Jericho used to be agriculture settlement since 12,000 years. And today I don't have water. Our Jericho became desert. Uh, even though we have five water springs around it, around the city itself. But four of them are controlled by Israel. In Oslo agreement, Israel signed to give Palestinians two and a half million liters every year from Jordan Valley water. And we get them nothing. In Jordan Valley, Israel controlling 84% of the land and 80% of the water. Around 60,000 people living in Jordan Valley, they use 20% of the water, and 11,000 settlers, they use 80% of the water. That's why they have a big settlements, a big water pools, big parks, water parks everywhere. Even to dig a artisan water in area A, which is under full Palestinian control, in the middle of Ramallah or Jericho or Bethlehem, it's forbidden. If they knew about it, they will come and destroy it and arrest the guy who's digging for it. So for me, the water is just one of the tools that the Israelis are using to transfer us and to keep as much as they can land without Palestinians. And it's not the water itself. And sometimes I feel we lose the main issue. Again, I will quote Sandberg. Thank you for all what you're doing, but let's keep forgetting that 
our freedom is much more important than a few drops of water. That's the main issue and that's the main thing that I want to fight for. And I'm asking the whole world why, why this is happening. It's clear, I don't need to tell you this. You can go to any website in this world. You can go to any human rights organization. You can check anything in the world. You can come by yourself and see this is happening for more than 50 years. Why we still have all the time to keep talking about it? And if I fight this by violence, if I fight the occupation by violence, I'm gonna be terrorist. And if I fight it like Avner, who served in the army for years and years, and the minute he stand against preventing Palestinians of getting their water, he was arrested. And we were cased as anti-Semitized just because we are asking for people rights. So that's what I have to say, and I'm willing to answer all your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Um, hold on, where? All right, so we have a bunch of questions. Again, if you have a question, please send them to the send questions here button in the chat box. Um, I'm just gonna start at the top. Um, so regarding Wadi Fukin, uh, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, I apologize. Um, this came up during your talk, Itai, west of Bethlehem. Do Israeli building rules and those of settlements approve of sewage to be dumped into the next valley? That village lost its water for living in agriculture by sewage. Oh, you're muted. There. Yes. Uh, so about the issue of sewage, it's one of the, the problems. And uh, I, I don't know if you're aware about it, but uh, Except of the of the weaponizing of uh, of the water through uh, changing the traditional spring to a tourist and baptizing site, also uh, nowadays there are uh, some uh, environmental organization of of settlers, and they are uh, fighting uh, many times against the problem of uh, sewage of the Palestinian villages, but the Palestinians are not allowed to establish a, a reasonable uh, sewage systems because they don't get uh, building permits for nothing. Uh, on the other end, the, set, the settlers and also uh, some of the industries of the, of the settlements are throwing uh, their uh, sewage uh, to uh, the fields and, uh, and uh, near uh, uh, the agricultural sites of the, of the Palestinians. Despite the fact that if they if they work uh, politically right, they could have gotten uh, uh, many times building permits uh, for building a sewage system and and uh, and to building a sewage uh, infrastructure. So in Valley Fukin, just uh, I think two months ago, the the settlement of uh, of Beitar Elite uh, had to pay some compensation to the Palestinian farmers about the problem of the sewage, but uh, of course. It's not even this conversation uh, will not solve the the problem Be because you have to to understand except of uh, of uh, the economical aspect of the Palestinian agriculture the econo it's not only economic issue it's also the connection to the land and uh, and the traditional way of life it's it's a it's a different uh, 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 importance than to me as a as a guy that lives in the city all his life, uh, to, to them is part of their life. So when when uh, when the the, the far, I've been in touch with them uh, uh, for many years. Anytime they had a problem, because except of the sewage, there's also a problem that uh, every once in a while settlers come and, uh, and are damaging their 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 field and, uh, and structure. Uh, it's 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 hurting more than the economic aspect. No compensation can compensate. No uh, financial compensation can compensate the the destruction of way of life. And this is the same with the the chef of community in the in the Jordan Valley. They are shepherd, uh, and as long as they don't want to change the way of life, Israel should not interfere with that. 
It's like indigenous people in the Amazon or in other places. As long as they want to stay shepherd, as long as Palestinians want to live from their uh, olive fields, olive uh, trees, Israel should not interfere with that. And by interfering with that, Israel is destroying a, a way of life. Thank you. Um, so next question going along, do the private water companies deny water to Palestinians for reasons other than their inability to pay or because of the restrictions imposed by the Israeli government? That was also directed to you, Itai, but really anyone can answer it. Osama, you look like you're muted. Can you unmute? Thank please, Itai, Itai, you can answer, please. Okay, so, so the, there's a problem more of, uh, of uh, the legality, as I said, of transferring the water to communities that are not considered legal by the Israeli authorities. Uh, uh, so the Palestinians have to, to, to buy the water from uh, people that, that sell it to them, but not from the official uh, water company. Uh, and uh, it's interesting to mention that uh, the military order in the West Bank apply to everybody, also on the settlers. And despite the fact that uh, also, as Avner said, uh, the Israeli outposts are uh, considered illegal even by the Israeli standard, all of them are connected to the water system. Uh, we filed freedom of formation request to the Israeli uh, water company called Mekorot. And we wanted to know if the new uh, outpost in the Jordan Valley, what the settlers call the, the farms, uh, uh, are connected to the water system. And we realized that they are connected. Uh, they were activists of combatant for peace and Mahsam Waj that just walk uh, on the, on the uh, lines of the water uh, and they got to the settlement itself. So what Mekorot answered us is that they, uh, working legally because they uh, sign contracts with the legal settlements and they don't interfere with the subcontracts of the settlements. So they don't inter interfere with who the settlements are selling the water. And this is how all the, the outposts and the illegal building inside and outside of the legal settlements are uh, connected to the water system. Thanks. Um... So can you guys say something? Um, this, this question came in while Osama was talking, um, but again, for anyone, can you guys say something about Israel's obligation as the occupier of the Gaza Strip? 97% of the water in Gaza is not fit for human consumption. Would you consider having a march for water rights um, for the Palestinians in Gaza? Gaza Strip is, is a big challenge for us. Uh, as a movement, I, and I, I say this, this openly. And the problem is that because of the separation, um, which is only getting worse in terms of fences and walls, and um, our ability to act with, in, in collaboration with people in Gaza is very, very limited. And um, the sad truth is that we are much more um, active in, in the West Bank because, because we are a joint Israeli-Palestinian movement and our Palestinians are from the West Bank. This is the only Palestinians we can meet and actually uh, work with uh, on the ground. We did a few activities around Gaza, um, not, not on the water, on other issues, but it was always Israelis demonstrating because Palestinians cannot enter uh, and then it would be uh, just another Israeli demonstration for the rights of Gazans, uh, different, different, different issues. So we are we we are very frustrated about um, the, the, our inability to to work effectively on issues that have to do with Gaza, and we are we are drowning anyway with you know the, the atrocities on the West Bank. So we. I wish we could do more. Can you say more about the next campaign, um, especially the influence yeah. over the Minister of Defense? Unless Osama, you look like you were going to jump in on that question. Sorry. No, I just wanted to say something that, uh, yes, we are trying our best to do a lot of change, but 
Uh, I wish we have the same I'd like the Israeli army from America that they get like 30 billion dollars a year or a month. Then we can yeah, make change in Gaza and everywhere. We barely have uh, money to cover our transportation and our you know, water tank and be the lawyers and bring something for the projects here and there. So actually it's not just we, it's not just the borders and the things. Also the, the rules, like I as a Palestinian can be arrested up to three years without going to court for demonstrating illegally, for demonstrating illegally for the water. So I, I, I can't do everything. And that's, that's where our Israeli friends who are using the rights of the Israeli citizens can do a little bit more. But we need to be support. We need a, a support in the government and everywhere. I was detained from America as a speaker last year just because I wanted to talk about these things, for example. So that the problem is not Israel itself. I just wanted to be to make people aware that if Israel didn't find support from America, uh, the first step to, to do all these things, though, all this apartheid system on the ground, they, they will change it. So the change is not, not, that will not come just from combatants for peace activities. It will come from you guys, from every and each one of you. If you support us financially, if you support us in the government, so if you make our voice go farther, then we will make change, and I promise we're going to reach Gaza. But unfortunately, my people are disappointed from, from us because, yes, we do. We do. We can buy a water tank, a big water tank. It will cost us $30,000, and we can take it and be arrested and be beaten and all these things and put it there. Two days after, Israel, even, by, even some water tanks come with the EU flag with the stars, the EU flag, and tents, and Israel confiscated because they believe they are above the international law. And that's the main problem, that we couldn't make big changes and we can't go together to change the situation. Thank you. I want to, I want to add to, to what Osama said. I, I, I'm not sure if it's uh, understood uh, in, in, in the right way in, in the States. Because the lingo of the conflict and all of this talk that makes it seem as if we have equal parties that are engaged in this conflict, this is not the situation. On the one hand, the Israeli side is this, it's a huge machine. You need to come and see its power. It's unbelievable. This is what we are up against. And then, and this system has thousands and thousands of, of, of soldiers and it works through ro roadblocks and bulldozers and fences and walls and checkpoints and magnetic cards and face recognition technologies and you name it. It's just unbelievable. This is, this is occupation 3.0. This is completely digitized by now. Um, data colonialism, call it what you want. But it's, it's, it's just so frustrating sometimes what Osama just mentioned. This, you know, we are coming with our water tank that we managed to buy, you know, we managed to buy water for one month for the people of the South Hebron Hills. Not all of them, just a few of them. And this is, this is a great financial challenge for us. And then the next day they come and they confiscate it or they, you know, it's, it's a drop in, in the ocean. Um, and this feeling is, is very often what we, we experience, this, this frustration um, of, of coming up against this, this huge machine. Um, the other thing I wanted to, I, you know, I, I wanted to say when Osama was, talk, was talking is how this machine operates different, differently against Israeli activists and Palestinian activists. And Osama mentioned it, but I just want to emphasize how literal it is. If I am arrested in the same march or demonstration that Osama is arrested, I will most probably be released before the day ends or maybe the next day. Osama might end up locked inside for three years, up to three years or a few months. 
and it will be, I don't know, Itai knows how long before he will see a lawyer. So this is, every, in every way you see this separation and this discrimination, it's not just water, it's everything. And indeed we have a few activists uh, who were arrested in a demonstration about four months ago, four Israelis, four Palestinians, the four Israelis, all the cases have been closed long, long ago. The Palestinian activists are still facing charges. So this is very, this is every day for us. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, so the next question was, can you guys say more about the next campaign? Um, specifically, Avner, you mentioned influencing the Minister of Defense, um, but just in general about the next phase, phase two of the water campaign. Yeah. So um, we are talking about how to, to do it these days. So I, I don't have the whole plan yet, but basically it's gonna be a, um, um, a chain of events, uh, on different scales. This also, uh, pardon me for mentioning it, it, it also has to do with uh, our budget for the next year, uh, which is not finalized yet because it's the end of the year, um, but it will be partly on the ground in the Palestinian uh, territories, uh, Jordan Valley and South Hebron Hill. And this time around, we will also do things inside the green line that is possibly even Tel Aviv or uh, in front of the Minister of Defense uh, uh, private house because it is completely unacceptable that this guy would be completely legitimate and respectable while he is personally responsible for denying people the most basic right, which is the, 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 the right and access to water. So we want to um, make him feel uh, uh, responsible, which he, he, he is anyway, but apparently he doesn't feel uh, this responsibility. So this, this is what we're trying to, to do. Uh, and then to get him to take measures to change the situation on the ground. And as Osama said, this will not end the occupation, um, but it will at least expose um, how this system works. Um, and this is something that Israel is very efficient in covering up. You know, we are the only, uh, the only democracy in the Middle East. Um, but in our backyard, there's, there's, there's nothing of this democracy, just nothing. Thanks. Um, so I'm gonna go back, find some questions. Um, so how much awareness and support is there among Israelis to end this human caused misery? I can answer this, but I'm not going to answer this. I will let my Israeli friends answer it. They look hesitant. I don't know how to answer it. Itai, maybe you can, I mean, how do you measure these things? But it's, it's important to say that uh, also the Badawin communities have a problem of uh, connecting to electricity and uh, water in the negative, in other areas. And even though the Badawin uh, do go to the, do strip to the military in a part of the society here in Israel, you don't see uh, the public or political discussion talking about the needs as a basic human rights need for uh, water and, uh, and uh, electricity. Uh, it's more, uh, seeing them uh, as a threat, uh, the threat on the Negev, uh, the southern part of Israel. So, so I think it's hard to talk about it, but on the other end, I think water is something that it's easy for everybody to understand on the most uh, basic human level, because all of us are using uh, water and need water. Uh, and I think the demands that we are asking in the campaign is uh, so simple because 
we are not, uh, of course we would like this to happen that the water agreement would change, but this is also issue of the, of the Palestinian authority to serve with Israel. But the issue of asking the Minister of Defense do not do out, stop confiscating the, the vehicle, stop confiscating the water tank, stop demolishing them, uh, let the Palestinian communities free access 24 seven to the water spring uh, and to the well, let them do maintenance of the well so they could use them. It's so simple because the Israeli uh, side is not being asked to do nothing, just not to disturb the community, not to disturb their, their uh, life. Uh, and on that, I also want to mention something that uh, I didn't say before, it's how it affects uh, women and the, and the kids, the, this lack of water, because this affects aspect of hygiene, this affects the possibility of uh, women in traditional uh, societies to go to do their needs in communities where you don't have toilets. Uh, uh, and uh, this uh, also, uh, connect to the possibility of uh, children uh, to get their education. Uh, so it has, uh, it has huge effect on them. And I think the reason why uh, this campaign was, uh, I think, uh, quite successful until now in Israel, despite what I started with the Badawins, is because uh, we are, ask, we are uh, suggesting a simple solution and we try to simplicize the, the problem when we explain it. Thank you. I think, I think that um, this, this is by no means a, a, a systematic assessment of the impact of the campaign, but all of us here are uh, longtime activists. Um, and uh, this uh, is, without doubt, our most successful uh, uh, campaign on the ground. I'm not talking about Memorial Day. We had other things that had their impact uh, and still have their impact. But in terms of a campaign on a specific issue that, that you know, starts rolling and, and, and gathers attention, this was the most successful. And I think it's because what Itai just said, that even people that are against us, that tend to justify Israeli policies and uh, the, 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 the evil here is so apparent. It's, you just cannot even, you know, greatest advocates of Israel cannot explain why illegal Palestinian communities don't get access to water and illegal Jewish settlements do get access to water. How do you explain that other than, you know, Jewish supremacy. What, what do you do with that? So I think this fact or the combination of the fact that water is so basic and that it's denied in so, uh, you know, uh, brutal ways, um, I think this is what made it uh, reach mainstream media, which is something that is very often hard to do with problems of Palestinians, Israeli public just don't care. So thank you guys. Um, last question. So first, thank you all for spending the last hour with us on the phone call. And so the question is, um, what do you hope to gain by having a webinar with, you know, 100 plus and hopefully sent out to many more um, Americans and internationals? What's your hope from us? And how can we help you? Thank you for the question. I just want to mention one thing first, which is important to me. Most of my webinars, we are talking like the Palestinians, the Israelis, the Palestinians, the Israelis. In the minds of the people, it seems like two big, huge countries are against each other, and which one have more rights than the other. I want to mention one small thing there. Most of the problems we are talking about, which is an area C, which is 62% of West Bank, it's under full Israeli control. So without saying anything, according to the international law, if you are occupying people, a human being, you have, according to the international 
to give them water, electricity, services. That's everywhere, even according to Judaism. Let's forget the international law. And according to religions. So what we are talking about the places that Israel control. The BA can't do anything there. And they have to give rights to these people. It's not something to, to negotiate here. So the question again, please, Beth. What I'm what I'm waiting from you guys. Yeah. 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 So first of all, I don't see all of you. I'm talking to human beings because I believe that as a human being, I have the right to be supported by humanity all around the world. I have been the right to be supported by the biggest democracy in the world and the only democracy in the Middle East. Yeah. And I have the right to grow up in a place where I can have water and take shower every day like everyone else. What you can do, you know what you can do. I will not tell you what you can do, actually. Imagine you are fighting for your rights. Imagine you are fighting for humanity and do what you are able to do. Maybe you can change the system by being the president tomorrow and make something change. Maybe you can send us $3 million today to make a big project next week. And maybe you just can come to visit and see what's going on home, here and go and talk about it. So all that I'm asking you is just to see us, Palestinians, whatever you want to call us as a human beings, and we deserve rights. And because of the history of Israel, which I believe and I support and I, am, I, I, I stand with, it doesn't mean that I have to pay all the prices of the historical mistakes with the Jewish people around the world. I'm a human being too, and I deserve rights. And the first right is water. And I'm not talking as a victim, by the way. I am, I'm out of this victimhood, but I need your support because in Arabic, they say one hand can't be clapped. We need more than one hand. So we need all your support the way you want. Thank you. Publish our website, publish our demonstrations, talk about us, talk about our organization. And the most important thing is, as you know, this world is ruled by mostly money, your donations. Yeah, thank you. I just want to add uh, that um, we, you know, since American Friends of Combatants for Peace was, was established and certainly over the last three years or four years, I don't remember exactly uh, when Beth uh, got into the job, we are getting tremendous boost uh, in terms of uh, financially and uh, in terms of connection with the US um, Jewish communities, Muslim communities. Um, and our ability to be heard over, you know, on the other side of the Atlantic, um, where so much power is concentrated, is hugely important. Um, I am just like Osama, I'm not gonna tell you what you should do. Um, but I think the people of American Friends, they probably, uh, they probably have a few ideas. Uh, and I, I, I urge you to, to get in touch, to stay connected with, with American Friends. And there's so much uh, you can do from over there. But I want to say one last thing. I keep, I keep saying this to Beth. Um, I think what we are talking about in Combatants for Peace, um, this joint struggle uh, against oppression, um, this belief that things can be different. We keep saying there is another way against all these people that say that there is no choice. This is you know, no choice, we have to fight. Um, it's universal. And the US has so many problems and it's so polarized these days um, that I think just working with this, these ideas of, you know, 
working over the, the divide and, and working together uh, in a joint struggle and speaking honestly about oppression, but also trying to overcome it, um, trying to embody the future we want to see. This is what we're doing. Um, I think this is also relevant for the US and for everywhere around the world. So what I'm, I, what I'm telling Beth all the time that American Friends is not just about supporting us here, but maybe projecting some of these ideas uh, to the US and to everywhere else. Um, so this is something also to, to think about. What, what, what do you take from what we do here and what is relevant to the US? So thank you all for, for being with us and for caring. I, I wanna say last word, please, if you allow me. I wanna say that I didn't do this talk to, 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 to tell people, please go against Israel tomorrow. I am not asking anyone to be pro-Palestine or pro-Israel. I'm asking everyone here to be pro-humanity. I'm asking you to do all what you can so my kid and Avner kids have the same rights in the future so they won't be enemies like me and Avner who were killing, who were willing to kill each other in the past because of the system. Please support us and help us to live equal and to end this conflict. It's not only the water. The water is one of the tools, one of the issues that they are using, but help us to end this historical conflict as we did between us, but we want to do it in a bigger way. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Itai, you had something you wanted to, you look like you wanted to jump yeah, in. Yeah, I, I actually uh, wanted to, uh, to give some suggestion what could be done. Yeah, I don't know if it's good, but I will do it anyway. So, uh, so uh, I think that uh, first, uh, what you could do is to read the, there's so much material about the water problem by Amira As articles, UN reports, uh, the, com the uh, campaign materials that we made in, uh, com in Combatant for Peace uh, by uh, El Chak organization, many organizations wrote about the water problem. So you could just Google it on it and learn more. And then what I think that you could do is it's, you, you always need to like to bridge the differences from people that live in uh, other places, because I don't know how many of your community member or neighbors or family member ever visited in the Jordan Valley or Hebron Hill. So talk with them about situation that they're familiar, like the, the Flint, uh, Michigan water crisis. Uh, with uh, the, Americans, uh, the American government State Department program in the Sub-Sahara, uh, the American program about uh, climate change, you tell them, look, these are so big problem. Here it's such a small problem, it's just a political problem, so let's solve it. The, the, the way to solve it is that when uh, uh, Gantz is visiting the White House, Biden is also talking with him about it, and Biden will talk with him about it if a Congress member, your Congress member, and if your Senate member will approach uh, the Biden administration and will tell them, this is the easier problem that you could solve. It's not the infrastructure uh, bipartisan uh, plan. It's so easy. So, let, so you could solve it. On the principle level, we wrote in Combatant for Peace, in Combatant for Peace to President Biden to start conditioning the American aid to Israel on its uh, uh, commitment to the human rights uh, standards that uh, the, the US uh, ask other uh, countries that get uh, American taxpayer money. Uh, but the issue of the water is something specific that uh, you should ask your uh, politician uh, to solve and to talk about. Thank you. Oh, Osama, did you want to one last thought and then I'm gonna share a little? Good, okay. Um, so first, thank you all so, so much. I hope that was some good suggestions. I'm gonna throw a few more into the pot here of ways to help. Um, and thank you so much to our three speakers. So we're really grateful for you guys and your time. Um, so I know we've plugged um, gifts a lot this uh, webinar, um, partially because it is year end. So we hope you'll remember us um, this year. Um, and partially, if I'm being very transparent, because that was the biggest obstacle for the water campaign. Um, 
we had a huge successful campaign in September. It was about a month running. It had huge, huge momentum. And then we totally ran out of money and went completely broke. Um, and the campaign had to end. And Avner and Adam, the two heads of the campaign, wrote a whole proposal about step number two that we just couldn't do because um, we couldn't afford it. And um, especially as, as Americans, I can say that my tax dollars and your tax dollars all go to support war. And so what can we do to offset and support peace? Um, and to speak to Osama and Avner, I guess you both spoke about this, about you know, Israelis versus Palestinians, I wanna rephrase just a little bit and say, it's not about us versus them. It's not about Israelis versus Palestinians. It's about people who want peace and people who don't want peace. It's about people who are fighting for peace and people who are fighting for war um, or, and um, fighting for conflict and you know, denying human rights. And so we ask all of you to be on our side in the, we are the people who want peace. We are the people who are working for human rights and for humanity. And so when we ask ourselves about sides, maybe we can rephrase the question um, and ask ourselves, what side do we wanna be on? Do we wanna be on the side of social justice, of human rights, of humanity, and of peace? Um, so that's, that's, my, that's my pitch to you. Um, in light of the fact that it is December 15th, I can give you a little bit of information about um, this year and next year. So we were very generously given a grant from Europe to expand our youth programs, especially on the Palestinian side. Um, and we're very excited about that. And we are projecting that we should have funds for next year that will maintain our current programming. Um, but maintenance for us isn't enough. We really need this to grow. We need this work to expand and we have expanded so much in the last year. And that's where you come in. Um, and we really, we need to support these campaigns. We need to be able to run campaigns year round and not just in September until the funds for that campaign run out. We need to be able to be on the ground every day working for human rights um, and we need your support in that. And um, it was also touched, Itai mentioned, and I'm just gonna highlight it because it's important to me. Um, but how water influences, especially women and children, um, and especially the impact on women, um, especially you know certain privacy needs about going into the field in a traditional society versus having toilets, and it's so important. And another um, another aspect that we really want to expand next year is women's leadership and women's empowerment, um, and women's programming around women, violence against women, and the ways in which the occupation uniquely affects women, um, and creating a um, a leadership and empowerment piece to combatants for peace around that. So um, please, please, we need your help to grow this movement. We need your help to expand. Um, and so as year ends, please do remember us. And thank you very much, all of you for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. For supporting us. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>